Tonight's special guest is Ian Wishart. Ian is the author of 20 books and founder of Investigate magazine. With his journalistic background, Ian is the true and persistent crusader taking a look at the many issues confronting mankind. Tonight, Ian talks about four of his books and gives you a chance to win a copy. We welcome Ian Wishart as our special guest on The Beat Goes On. It's a big welcome to Ian Wishart. Hey, Jared. You are the busiest man with a word processor in New Zealand, aren't you? The books just keep pouring out. 20 now, is there, Ian? I type in my sleep. <laughs> It's an endless um, you know, outpouring of words and probably I would work, I guess, a good uh, 18 to 20 hours a day. 18 to 20 hours a day. Mm. Where's this energy, this wellspring of energy coming from? I've got from? a beautiful and wonderful wife and she yeah. you know, makes sure that everything is, is in its place and so that I just have the ability to concentrate on the tasks that I have. Well, look, here's, uh, you come here today to talk about The Hunt. What a fascinating story. And there's uh, three other books here on the table and these four books we're going to give away to our lucky viewers as the beat goes on. Uh, we'll talk about the other three in just a moment, but first of all, this looks fascinating, The Hunt. Tell us all about that. Yeah, well, this is part of a four-book package we're doing, and uh, we'll give away a set to some of your mm. viewers as well. The Hunt is a fascinating story about a New Zealand mother whose uh, two children, aged four and two, were kidnapped off the streets of London in 1981 and never seen again. Uh, and uh, for 30 years, she wondered whether her children were alive or dead, and it's so rare for those sort of abductions mm. to ever have a happy ending. Normally, kids taken that young are given a new identity and never know who they are. Um, her new husband, about five to seven years ago, began trying to search for these children and he eventually set up a false identity online and managed to find the kidnapper living in, in the Middle East. And The Hunt is the story of that journey, that, that cat and mouse game to try and uh, unmask the kidnapper and find out the whereabouts of these children. And in fact, I was the, uh, the first person to tell them who they really were. Uh, that was an incredible feeling that was. So she had the a little bit of relief knowing that it was her ex-husband doing it, and it just wasn't a complete stranger. But where have my children gone? Yeah, I mean, they, they vanished. They, they literally vanished. vanished off the face yeah. of the earth. And uh, it was only through sheer dogged detective work by her new husband that managed to find these kids. But then we had the issue of, well, how do you tell them what their life was like and what had actually happened? And he said, we've got to write this story and, and, and write it in a form that they can be presented with it. But we only have one shot at this because yeah, if we get is. it wrong, yeah then they'll never speak to her again, they'll, they, they won't believe it. And how's this selling? It's done very well. It mm. was huge news around the world. I mean, the Daily Mail in Britain and, and the Evening Standard in London led with the story. It was on the BBC and the ITV. I mean, it, it's just, it was, the, the parents of uh, Madeleine McCann, Kate and Jerry McCann, got in touch. Mm. Uh, there are three companies vying for the movie rights for that book. It is just an absolutely gripping New Zealand story. Yeah. Wow. Well, we've got such a pile here. Uh, vitamin D. Now, this has just been released, hasn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, and you've got some interesting theories about vitamin D, haven't you? About cancer, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, it's a, it's a very, very important book, and it's extremely popular. Uh, what most people don't realise is we've spent the last three decades listening to the Sun Smart, Stay Out of the Sun, Slip, Slop, Slap message from the Cancer Society from the Ministry of Health. Was that a whole sh sham, that campaign, uh, created by the people who manufacture the Slip, Slop, Slap? Well, it's so, I'm so glad <laughs> you asked that question, because one of the things I looked at in the book was... Um, Who's paying the piper? Mm. And what I found was that all the sunscreen charities, the Melanoma Foundation, that sort of thing, they're all funded by sunscreen makers. They all get most of their money and, and big chunks of money from the sunscreen chemical pharmaceutical companies. And um, what was very interesting, what you'll find out in the book, is that there is not one credible scientific study in the world, not, not, one, not one, that actually shows that sunscreen protects you from yeah. melanoma. Sunscreen protects you from skin aging, but it doesn't protect you from melanoma. So for 30 years they've been selling us this message, put on more sunscreen to protect you from melanoma this summer, it's really crucial. Use more of the sponsor's product, mm. and it doesn't work. And that's why our melanoma rates, rates, I believe, are skyrocketing, because we've all been slapping on, basically the emperor has no clothes, we've been slapping on a product that will not protect you. For three decades, our kids, ourselves, our parents, we've all been doing this. And, and, and they've been saying, oh, you should have put on your slip, slop, slap. Exactly. And of course, that wasn't it. They were putting it on, but it has no protection. It has no protection. But what, what sunscreen does do is it stops you from making vitamin D. Normally when the sun hits your skin, yeah. it creates a tanning effect, and the tanning effect creates vitamin D in your bloodstream. It turns out, and it's in the book, that your, every organ in your body requires vitamin D. And we didn't know this until about 10 years ago. That is medical science. And uh, we've now found, for example, that people who have high vitamin D levels, in other words, they get plenty of sunlight or they take vitamin D supplements, uh, have cut their risk of dying of cancer or heart disease by 77%. 
Now, there's not a wow. drug on the market you can take. Mm. Uh, there was a study out uh, just a week ago on blood pressure, and it showed that uh, people given uh, vitamin D supplements um, have uh, uh, high, high levels of vitamin D uh, can lower their blood pressure as much as a prescription drug. And that's just vitamin D. No nasty, harmful side effects. None of the usual things you get with blood pressure drugs. So the book has about 20 or 30 chapters dealing with each of these issues in there. So people are finding, I mean, I had a woman ring up today. It's about the fourth or fifth copy she's bought. She's just giving them away to friends and mm. family. Um, it's life-changing. That whole campaign about slip, slop, slap, it, it had a feeling, the same as global warming, mm. there's a sort of a hysteria element to it. Mm. And, and now every child has to wear a hat and... Mm. Uh, Oh, well, again, the, the, the all created the, by companies. What again, as I said, not one credible scientific study shows that sunscreen protects you from melanoma. But here's the irony: there are a bunch of scientific studies that show that sun tanning protects you from melanoma. So the yeah. the mere fact of getting a suntan and boosting mm -hmm. vitamin D levels creates a protection within your body, which makes sense because we've evolved to have mm. that response to the sun. We've been under the sun for for hundreds of thousands, millions of years, and we adapt to it. Mm. We need sunlight. If we don't get sunlight, we get sick. That's why our rates of disease, I mean, vitamin D is not just linked to cancer and heart disease. It's linked to asthma. It's linked to uh, ADHD, you know, families with ADHD and attention deficit disorder. It's linked to mental illness, schizophrenia, that sort of thing. Um, it's linked to blood pressure, as I said. It's linked to diabetes, prostate cancer. The works. All of these diseases have a major impact on them if you have Higher low, levels of vitamin yeah. D, vitamin D, and if you have low levels, you you have you're in a bad shape. You, mm. Your chances of dying from cancer are much higher if your vitamin D levels are low. That's amazing, and that's all in vitamin D. Yeah, is this the miracle vitamin? Again, it's an extremely popular book. We yeah. would have sold over eleven thousand copies of that worldwide now. Very interesting too. Before we get on to the uh, the final one, uh, missing pieces. Yeah, this is uh, number three in our four book special. It's um, the story of uh, the, the first book, tourists, yeah. Swedish Tourists, Urban Hoglin and Heidi Parkinen, who disappeared in the Coromandel Peninsula in 1989. David Wayne Tamahiri was, of course, convicted of their double murder. And then uh, Urban Hoglin's body was later found in a place where police didn't think it would be. So this is the first book on the case, and it's fascinating because what it opens up is it shows you how weak the police case actually was and how dangerous the conviction is. Uh, but also throws up a couple of uh, new leads and new suspects um, that are, are named in the book, or at least one of them is. Uh, and it's, uh, again, a very important story. We had a deathbed confession from a man who said, I, I killed them. And he was in the area at the time on the run from police, and they never drew the, the, the link. Uh, they never made the link, and they concentrated instead on Tamahiri. So um, it's, a, it's a fascinating who done it. And the, the thing about this book is uh, when you read it, we had access to the letters that Heidi and Urban were sending home from each of their campsites that they camped in New Zealand. So you have a, a diary, if you like, of their New Zealand holiday and the things that they loved about this country and the people that they met and the, the experiences that they had, the love that they shared for each other. These things were expressed in, in letters home. And it's a, 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 a haunting read, I think one would call it, a, a real murder mystery. Incredible pressure comes on the leading policeman in all these cases to find someone immediately to satisfy the media. It, it's like da if days go by and there's nothing, th then they get a call from head office saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? Find the guy. Mm. And, uh, and the pressure goes on. And of course, we have to pick someone. Yeah, well, in, in fact, that is exactly uh, recounted in the Missing Pieces book. Uh, John Hughes and his team were under incredible pressure because this was a, a case involving overseas tourists and it yes. had the potential to seriously harm our, our visitor industry, trade. Yeah. Mm. And uh, there were, the government was wanting results quick, and National Headquarters was wanting results quick, and they found somebody... I mean, t in all fairness, David Tamahiri looked like the right fit. Uh, <laughs> you know, he had prior form for rape yeah. and manslaughter. Yeah. Um, so he was a good fit for the crime, right. but on the evidence that the police had, they, they had other avenues they could have pursued and would have led them perhaps to the real killer. So yeah, that's book Those three. three. That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> number three, three. in the, in now, the gift pack today. The uh, Da Vinci Code. Wonderful title. Of course, it's, it, it has a lot to do with the, uh, the Da Vinci Code. I mean, you're obviously there's... Uh, but you're coming in from a different angle, aren't you? Yeah, Dan Brown, of course, he's just yeah. released his book, Inferno, which is doing quite well. But he did, he did the Da Vinci Code, yeah. uh, which was the theory that Jesus didn't die on the cross, that he got married and had kids and you know, went along and lived happily ever after. Acres of words written about it. Well, people yeah. want to believe that um, the church is evil incarnate and all the rest of it. And the church, is certain, in quote marks, has certainly done some things wrong over the, the millennia. 
Uh, but we are all human, and this is the problem. Uh, in politics, uh, Christian politics and church politics is the same as any other kind of politics, mm -hmm. and, and whether it's that or the local scout group, uh, there's people with agendas and people who mm -hmm. believe they know best, and away they go. In a nutshell, what is the Divinity Code? What the Divinity Code does is it starts in the word go, and it says, okay, let's assume that you're a fan of Richard Dawkins or Christopher Hitchens or... Who are well-known atheists. Well-known atheists. Mm -hmm and a couple of others, uh, John Spong, um, Karen Armstrong, and um, that you think that the church invented the Bible in the year 325 AD, uh, the Roman Catholic Church invented the New Testament, uh, and you think that uh, it's all been a giant conspiracy. What's the evidence that uh, proves that one way or the other? And what the Divinity Code goes back is first principles, okay, we are living on a planet that clearly exists, in a solar system that clearly exists, in a universe that clearly exists. What does science tell us about that existence? What does early religion tell us about their beliefs and myths about the early creation? How consistent are those? Uh, did, for example, mankind believe initially in, in many gods and then revise that down to one? Or did we begin with a belief in one god and one creation event, a bit like the Bible in Genesis? And did we sort of dif disappear along the way and, and vanish into other areas? Um, so we, we look at the early creation myths, we look at the uh, Big Bang, and the scientific evidence for the Big Bang and what that means, and scientists are actually saying that you really can't explain the Big Bang effectively without invoking God, because... Yeah, what the, came before, what came well, before, what came before? To give you an example, to give your viewers an example, I don't know if they can see my hand, but the universe at the moment of the Big Bang was smaller than a grain of sand. It could have fitted in your hand. It would weigh an awful amount. It would go straight through your hand. <laughs> but nonetheless, it was condensed. It was, yeah. condensed. It was yeah. that small, and it mm. just exploded within nanoseconds to fill the void that, that we now have. Had the universe had a speed wobble of even half a nanosecond in the, in the speed of its expansion, it would have collapsed and we wouldn't be here. But it collapsed, it, it expanded absolutely perfectly. Mm. Not just perfectly for the existence of the universe, but perfectly for the existence of us. So what you're saying is that there's uh, clearly an intelligent design. Yeah, the, the book is basically saying, look, if, if, you, if you look at the evidence objectively, you take a, if you come at this as a Christian or an atheist and you take away your baggage and bias from either side and just look at the scientific evidence and look at it from a matter of probability calculations, which the scientists have now done, the, ex the probability of life and human life existing on this planet and this part of the universe is so remote that we're far more likely to be hit by a hundred lightning bolts before tomorrow morning, personally, each one of us, than that to happen, and yet it did. And there's about 250 things that we now know of that had to happen perfectly within the creation of the universe and the Earth and the solar system. To create the stage, to create for, us stage, to, stage for us to, to exist, tell our story. To tell our story and to yeah. be here. The big question is, you were an atheist yourself, weren't I was. You? What was the big Damascus moment for you? What uh, Was it an accumulation of a lot of facts or suddenly something happened? One. Uh, it's a combination. Um, I guess the biggest impact was that as a journalist, mm. as an investigative journalist, I was constantly being confronted with uh, what I called happy, clappy, born-again Christians who annoyed me. Uh, <laughs> and and I, um, I wanted to find out whether the claims stacked up from a journalistic perspective. Yeah. Sorry. And um, so I, I, I started researching it, expecting to find out it was a crock. Mm. Instead, every piece of evidence I found when I really honestly drilled into it, challenged me to look a little bit harder, a little bit deeper. Well, this wasn't what I expected. And so I came to faith gradually. Uh, there was a, however, a road to Damascus moment for me. Um, my wife Heidi uh, followed an a, a Anglican church and was invited to become born again. And I hadn't been at that stage. I was you know, a church goer, but not a born again Christian. And she insisted that I come along to her baptism to support her, and I did and they, they, I'd, I agreed to be baptised and undergo the full water baptism and, and the Holy Spirit is prayed as part of the baptism sequence. And when it happened, uh, when they started praying for me laying on hands, I was suddenly hit by this, effectively a bolt of lightning, this, this white light just surrounded me. Wow. And I couldn't mm. move. I was paralysed to the spot. Now I'd seen as a sceptical journalist, I was a real supernatural sceptic, I'd seen people fall over when they were touched by preachers and thought, you're faking it, you're just you know, going over the flow. Yeah. I couldn't have fallen over if I'd tried. Mm. I was rooted to the spot. Not only was I rooted to the spot while they were praying, I was struck dumb. I couldn't speak. I couldn't move a muscle. I could not speak. This was totally countercultural. It wasn't what I had expected from my own research. I had no prior experience of anything like this. 
which again was an indicator to me that this was something unique, not something that I had created from my expectations. Uh, and sure enough, as, as my baptism went on, at the end of the prayer session, by the way, I immediately collapsed. When they stopped praying, I just fell in a heap to the ground, but I couldn't walk. I had to crawl <laughs> off into the <laughs> distance to a chair. And they said to me, you were okay? And all I could go was, <laughs> I couldn't even. Um, and that was God saying, I, I, I got the strong sense during this baptism that God was saying to me, look, you've built up this entire wall. You think you're such a hot journalist and you've got all these answers. I've just poked you where you didn't expect to be poked. Uh, sit up and take notice. And I did. Uh, and, my faith. and you haven't wavered since no, then? No, I haven't. I, I haven't wavered since then. I, I, I went out and I did effectively the research for the Divinity Code. I, I bought every single book on the history of Christianity and religion that I could find from Wonderful. Amazon. Wonderful, yeah. And, and satisfied myself. There was a, a, an explanation for what I had experienced because it was totally unexpected. What I, what I need to know, should we give one person the four books or should we give four people one book each? Uh, why don't we give a, uh, four people one book each, but if people want to get the four book set, we're going to do them effectively at half price. So you can get yeah. all four books for $80 plus shipping, uh, and we'll do that for your viewers. The, the phone number for them to ring... Okay, let's get that now. ...is 0800... 0800... 747... Oh, 747, that's an easy number. 007. That's, that's a, oh, <laughs> <laughs> 0800 Jumbo Jet James Bond. <laughs> That's wonderful. 0800 Jumbo Jet James Bond 74708. 007 747 007. And they can go to the website ianwishart.com so, uh, as well. Now it's four different books, four different winners. Yeah. But if a viewer out there says, wow, I'd love to read those four books, they can uh, give you a call at 0800 747 007 and uh, they, they can take $80, did you say? $80? Yeah, 80 bucks for the pack for the plus four? shipping and, uh, and effectively that's half price, so you're that's saving about 80 bucks. Wonderful. Now we need a question for the four lucky winners. that they've, uh, They're going to email jared at thebeatgoeson.co.nz and please put your postal address so we can send the book to you. And we're going to ask them a very simple question. What is the vitamin that we really do need? Vitamin D. Email Jared at The Beat Goes On, Vitamin D. You could be one of the winners. Ian, every time you come here, you've got a wonderful book to talk about, so I always enjoy your visits. Thank you very much for that. You're back soon. Okay. Cheers. Thanks.